How we doing out there? Ladies and gentlemen, I am Mags, and I am back to do another reaction video. That's right, for you. <laughs> All right, so tonight we are checking out The Warning. This is a documentary on Title Rising. This is called Rising The Warning. This was a donation request from Full Texan Effect. Thank you so much for your donation and your request, Full Texan. Love you, buddy. And I love The Warning. So it's going to be kind of cool to see a documentary about them maybe we'll learn all the mysteries sorry i got some new features i wanted to play with but uh before we get into that as always please don't forget to like heart follow, hit the notification bell follow subscribe all the things all the social medias check out my willow link down below it's got the links to everything down there especially the discord which we're very active in we can have a good time with it so come on and join us and join in on the fun conversations uh, one of these videos i'm going to show you guys one of the my fun one of my favorite parts of our discord is mags is everywhere and they're basically photoshopping my face on different people and things and everywhere it's been pretty amusing to see all right let's get into the warning oh trade it's not obviously started playing here in Mexico where Mexicans were from Mexico so our first shows were always here that's sad that they gotta say that home and like even though with this even though we speak English um we're Mexicans we're we're you know in Mexico we started playing here but yeah sorry I, I just had to focus a little fun out of it. And then just across the country and I feel like we've seen it grow over the years and how we started and just our crowd. And it makes me so excited so that excited, people yeah. my age are looking for this energy and like this music specifically. Female-led rock bands, female like only woman rock bands. So she started working as Accurate. a young teen, a kid. <laughs> we didn't even start out as women. Like we started out as little girls yeah. in this children. industry, children. Which those of you who already know the warning obviously know that. And yeah, for those of you that don't know, that yeah, like they were like I think <sighs> LA was like eight or nine when they started i can't remember exact ages i had them before and then i lost them but yeah they definitely started out super young and it's been <laughs> you know my 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 hats off to them for being able to do that because i am not nearly as talented and i am way way older literally <laughs> It involves a lot. And we were doing it with our parents. Like we were we were pretty protected. Like they supported us so much. They got us into lessons. Like they bought us our instruments. Like they give us the liberty to like really concentrate yeah. on music. Because imagine you're like just a teenager, maybe 13, and you want to do this. But of course, there's tons of different things that you want to try out and do. So like sticking with it was also hard, you know? started out as a five member band our parents are part of the band right now yeah. obviously our family has grown a bit more like with our team our management and everyone that works with us but as we keep on working <laughs> that is always like the center of everything and everyone yeah. we start That's working awesome. with starts feeling like family because we've always had that vibe How to be like disciplined and responsible and like level-headed yeah that, and, I, and i feel like that's really important for the industry that we're in so a big hug to mom and dad for everything <laughs> uh yeah it's definitely not easy at all man like... what we I... think really got us into this energetic music and rock and roll was definitely the rock band, the, the video, video game. game. We love to play that game, and it was so fun that we just like looked at the screen and we just 
we want to do that. I told my dad, <laughs> like, I want to play the guitar. And he's like, are you sure? And I was like, of course. By the first week, my fingers hurt so much that I was like, please, no. <laughs> but I fell in love with it, and there was no going back. There was no going back. That's awesome. <laughs> I don't like that number, but okay, 13 years. And uh, well, I've been playing since I was a little kid. I would always play on the drums, like with toy drums. And I remember just, I really like hitting things. things. So it was like a perfect match for me. She said, and, uh, well, you know, I really liked hitting things. <laughs> oh, girl, I feel you. I feel you. Yeah, I tried playing both drums and guitar growing up and uh was not easy it turns out that I just hit a little too hard sorry guys i guess i got some new features and i'm just playing with them all and i remember just i really like hitting things so it was like a perfect match for me and my dad saw that i have really good coordination and he asked me like hey like, are you up for lessons? Like, do you want to give it a shot? And I was like, yeah. Nobody wanted to give me lessons. I was a, <laughs> I looked like a toddler. I mean, and you like, were I was six. super were short. Toddler. Like, playing the drums, it didn't look very, very promising for me. But um, <laughs> I met one teacher look and had, like a, like, a test class. Mm -hmm. And the teacher was like, oh, leave her with me. Like, like she'll be good. Like, let's do this. me my first bass and of course I was really young and really short and I couldn't play a full-scale bass so they bought me a smaller bass which I have it's right here. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's really <laughs> small and I still couldn't play that and I learned for about a month and then we started playing, playing together, together immediately so yeah. I didn't really have like that much time to get used to my instrument before we started playing together <laughs> Okay, wait, but I know that this isn't part of it. I'm going to ask you a do question. It, do it, do it. Because it's like, do it. Cause yeah. I know, I know, this isn't my place, but I will. Because there's a lot of people who tell you, like, why don't you play with a pick? Because normally oh, rock music true. is just like, pick, but pick. you, like, from the start, it I was always like, play with my finger fingers. style. It's, I yeah. play, I know how to play with a pick now, and I do, I really do like okay. the sound of it. But I don't know, I just always played with my fingers and I do feel more comfortable with my fingers even though I do play more on time with a pick, it's weird. It does hurt more though, but- Yeah, I did see the, and then one of the, and then a couple of the newer, well, I think it might've been one or two, I don't remember, my brain, it no work sometimes, but I did see that, you know, she did start using a pick and, um, and uh, definitely the pick sound is good, is good too, but I definitely know a few local musicians around me, like a few bassists and stuff and, uh, yeah, they prefer their fingers to a pick, but sometimes a pick just, you get a completely different sound out of it, but some people like using their fingers just because of the feel of the bass. I, I don't know. Everybody's different. Uh, you guys play bass. Let me know your opinions on fingers or pick and why. But I get <laughs> it. It's like when I play without shoes and when I play with yeah, shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. in our careers like we did our enter sandman cover which went viral but i feel like the point where we were like we really want to do this like for the rest of our lives was when we started writing our own music and releasing our own stuff that was like whoa like i can we can create something yeah put it out in the world and people react to it, it was they just react that we they really, did really really like, like liked uh, and looked uh, forward uh, to react. so now that we are doing what we do today like, I, I just feel like it's the thing that really keeps us going, our music. Of course, like, yeah, that one's, that's a gnarly like, song. Like we that. have our disagreements and our little fights and stuff like that. 
but we get along really well. We and I, know each other so well that <laughs> yeah. we know how to make it work. Exactly. And in the second that we start writing music, Wait, everything just like, flows really nicely. Like, I don't know what to call it except like sibling magic. Yes. <laughs> Being on the same wavelength. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Escape the Mind, those were our first compositions ever. ever. That was our first time writing. I was like 12, Danny was 14, and I was 9. We were oh, children. Right. <laughs> we were children. <laughs> but... I, it was the moment where we really fell in love with music and like what we wanted to do. Like creating something was just such a powerful experience. And you know, it was such a key thing, I think, personally, that we were not thinking about will people like it? Well, because we were not going to release it. We were not even going to record it. Uh, it was not going to be a thing. So we just literally wrote from our 14 year old's hearts. And I and then we jump into our first album, 21st Century Blood. And it was weird because some of the compositions that are in 21st Century Blood were written in the in same the time era as Escape the Mind. Mm -hmm. But there, I, there was this very big leap we gave with this song that we made called Free Falling. song we actually wrote together, together. Yeah. yeah and you know it was also a big thing that we started like looking for outside inspiration we really like what's happening in the world that we can write about and more than anything like we read so much and we consume a lot of yeah. media as any gen c team does <laughs> so we were constantly getting inspired by other Different stories scenarios. that we were hearing mm -hmm. so 21st century blood was like we felt like it was our first step mm -hmm. you're yeah. like okay we're a band now this is our album and nothing will change One thing that I really liked that we do, we really looked for what the song needed. We were like, okay, so what if this is a song with only piano, violins, and stuff like that? Like, we didn't focus on, oh, we have to be uh, rock. We just focused on the energy that yeah. went into the song. So, if you hear our music, oh, yeah. sometimes it'll be very, very. Sorry, guys. I know I'm being a little quiet, but I'm just really vibing out into this. But yeah, it's amazing to know some of that and get some of their feelings on it and like they said you know they weren't really worried about oh is it supposed to sound like this they literally just wrote whatever came from their hearts and like you know not a lot of people do that a lot of people worry more about what's going on what other people are going to think and they're like well okay now they're writing on you know things going on in the world and still it's you know how they feel about it not what are, oh man what are other people gonna think and that is absolutely amazing and like they said with some of their songs where it's just really acoustic or instrumentals and so much so much respect son oh we have to be uh rock we just focused on the energy that yeah. went into the song so if you hear our music sometimes it will be very varied within the mm -hmm. same album <laughs> But then Queen of the Murder Scene comes. It's our second album. And Queen of the Murder Scene. Like... I was I was in middle school. I started going through my emo phase. So you can you can hear clearly there how that shift and like I'm angsty now. I am angsty now. If you couldn't tell from the death star these albums like grew with us it's yeah. literally you can see like the change yeah you can you can feel the like, personality yeah and, music. 
Yeah. We Know the Murder Scene is a concept album. It tells a story. A novel. It, yeah, it was like a novel, and it was a really different process writing songs to fit a narrative mm -hmm. and a plot. It was really hard. It was actually. hard because we had some. And then we had to add like the filler episodes, uh -huh. but yeah. we didn't want them to feel like filler, filler songs. songs. So we really <laughs> had to put meaning into every single little part. Yeah, I feel that. But I was like really into this idea of making it a whole album about the story. Yeah. And when I told them about it, they were like, what? Why is there blood everywhere? Why? I was like, we, we, had, we had to change so much, like a lot story. of the storyline, because it was it wasn't it was that like much that. of a storyline. It, yeah, it was just, just like, murder. murder. It was just a murder. <laughs> oh man, sorry. <laughs> Why is there blood everywhere? <laughs> I was like, we, we, hear me had, out. we had to change so much, like <laughs> a lot of the storyline, because it was it wasn't it wasn't that like much that. of a storyline. It, yeah, it was just, just like murder. 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 Yeah. Sorry, I can't help. But at the same time, you were getting into I was getting into K-pop. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <And> so <laughs> we took that evil face K-pop. Like, this is also getting into K-pop. Right? Yeah. So you can K-pop a lot of influences in there that maybe you don't pinpoint them yeah. as such, but for us it's really apparent like which faces we were going that through. That key change into the, the one. Those key like... changes, those harmonies, like it was all very K-poppy for us. It's the thing that we also love to do. That as we start learning new ways of doing this, we just like, okay, what's the next thing that we can try out with our music? Yeah. So. And in, in Queen of the Murders, you know, it was key changes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. It was, it was it definitely was. change the key. That was a theme. Coming from Queen of the Murders, scene. Things are really different now because mm -hmm. I feel like we really grew as people, even as musicians, more, like, right? Because we're going through our teenage years. Of course, you grow a lot from one year to another, mm -hmm. and you you start living different experiences and stuff like that. So I feel like this third album is personal. Yeah. Like it talks more about our feelings or situations that are close to us or our opinions on certain situations. was one of the songs that we started writing together and we had music first yeah. before lyrics and melody. It's usually the other way around. So the three of us were in this, this room, room yeah. and yes, Danny right and I were like playing, like getting the riff. And I was like, let me write a melody really quickly for the verse and just like put some lyrics on there. that it encases what this uh, new album represents for us, the changes that we went through as musicians, as people, and in writing, because we saw things differently. Like, right now, we really concentrated on adding <laughs> a lot of, like, harmonies and how, like, the bass and the drums were going to play together, together. and then differently at the same time. Yeah, and that's definitely something that um, if you guys watched any of the videos that I've done from the new album, that is something I've pointed out repetitively is how the bass is way more prominent, but still goes with the basic flow. But, sorry, it's still a basic flow of what's going on and how it blends together so well. I pointed that out because like the bass is it goes with the drums, but it also stands out more uniquely now. Ali always stood stood out. Because I've, I've always loved Ale's playing, but now it stands out even more and she's gotten even better and, ugh. Harmonies and how, like, the bass and the drums were going to play together together and then differently at the same time. 
Like there is so much room to grow. And we always enter these situations like with big wondrous eyes. Like we're gonna learn today. Big wondrous eyes. What are we gonna learn now? <laughs> What's gonna happen yeah. now? Oye, como va? Mi ritmo bueno para gozar. Mulata, oye, como va? Mi ritmo bueno para gozar. Mulata, pam, 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 universe like we treat it as such even uh ourselves we know it's nothing like recording in a studio but it's so much fun you're like directly sharing for, uh, and that expressing to the people who are watching you it's and amazing. i feel like our past albums we try to grab like the sound like how we sound live into mm -hmm. our recordings and yeah. we never really because I, i don't think i've ever seen any live videos from this particular show i've always seen them in the bars and stuff but it's always hard to you can always tell there's a lot of people there but you can never really see but that is a, a lot of people that's like an incarceration type thing which if you guys never heard of incarceration it's a uh, event that we have in columbus ohio which is like a big festival like that that goes on for a couple like three days usually and they have a bunch of bands there and stages set up all on the prison grounds Please sharing Uh, and expressing to the people who are watching you. It's and like I feel like live. our past albums, we try to grab like the sound, like how we sound live into mm -hmm. our recordings. And yeah. we never really- oh, we have never accomplished We that. never yeah. accomplish that until like this, this third album. Third album. <laughs> I've already collapsed. So I'll just drown my sorrows in a non-existent world. We put in a lot of hard work Yep. into our yeah, live shows we, we really plan everything out and yep. we practice it a lot <laughs> and even our our movements like if you see us playing in our early stages of the band oh, we're we just like statues <laughs> and that's something that we actually worked on consciously it's like how to play being you able do to you really have to bring more energy to the show like, like we make fun of each other while we're on stage <laughs> and i know like i shouldn't really be like saying this but even when we mess up we're like oh you messed up Yeah, yeah. Like, we, just, we just look, look at each, each other like, like you messed up. up. Yep, yep, yep. Been there. When we play a show in our country and in our home city, it's just absolutely it's amazing. Cool. Actually, our last show that we played was in Mexico City and We hadn't been to Mexico City in a long time. Yeah. So coming back and seeing that we had more fans, like there were a lot of people watching us. It was just insane. It was it one was of the so best cool. shows. People like had. screaming our songs. We actually have like a video where you hear everyone singing on top of like it's Yeah, like, like you, you, can't you can't hear, hear us. <laughs> awesome. Hometown love, man. Mexico really has something very special. A big scene like, of energetic people yeah. ready yeah, people for are really metal. passionate about yeah. music in general here in Mexico, and the crowds are always really energetic. Like this energy that they transmit, you just can't help but give it back. It's really about making like a personal connection of what you want to transmit through yeah. your instrument. Cause I, I like I look at our past videos, like our covers, <gasps> no, no. and I'm like, no, <laughs> what are you doing? But we were so young, we were starting out, so it's okay. Yeah. But I feel like that's a really nice thing. Looking back and see, like seeing how much you've improved. That was always something grown. I wondered if PA did. Like, I feel like in uh, videos I've done before where I mentioned, like we've, me and my old partner used to talk about it. Um, whether or not they, they artists like the warning or baby metal who started off really young, go back and watch their past videos and stuff. And 
<laughs> they just confirmed it and they they just got that cringe effect of what we imagined they would be like oh don't don't do that oh, no, no. and i'm like no what are you <laughs> doing but we were so young we were starting out so it's okay but i feel like that's a really nice thing looking back and see like seeing how much you've improved how much you've grown at the end of the day like there's a goal and there's something that you want to reach and it's really about putting in a lot of work and just also be very conscious that the people who work around you are different you know are going through different things and will think differently than you there's no one that will think exactly like you so taking things with a grain of salt and not taking things personal Personally. for it to ruin like your experience it's a key thing you know as sisters we really have like that separate you know our working selves and you know our sister selves yeah they're not wrong like, especially when you work with a bunch of different people or different levels of everybody has their own opinion and everything like that it's just uh, the way of figuring out how to incorporate everybody's vision and in, in, into the into what the product is and just all the fun stuff like that, but yeah, mm -hmm. I agree 100%. Oof. Sometimes people have these stereotypes or these stigmas, like we've seen it in places we've played in festivals and stuff like that. Oh, I'm not bored. I'm just tired. Let me give me a wake me up. Hopefully that helps. No, it wasn't loud enough for me. Stigmas. I don't know if it was like loud enough for you guys. In places where you played in festivals and stuff like that. Like, the treatment is really different oh, yeah. to, like, other bands, like male bands. But we see that change after, like... We play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we play, and then, like, people's faces completely change. Yeah. And, like, everyone's just so <laughs> Which excited. Which is fun to see, because they remind themselves that it doesn't matter who is playing, their age, whatever it is. It's about the music. Music is... The language it doesn't matter like where you're from like what language yes. you speak like anything like big facts music is the language, language. <laughs> music is the language. <laughs> music unites us all And it's over, which makes me kind of upset, but whatever. That was killer. Um, yeah, it was nice to see kind of how they uh, feel about, you know, where they've become, where they're going and everything like that. And I, I was super impressed with it. And it was nice to see them. You know, I've seen a few behind the scene things, but nothing really like that. So thank you again, Full Text and Effect, for your donation and your recommendation. Love you, buddy. Um, if you guys have any other recommendations, please let me know in the comments below. Hit me up on the Discord, which you can find in the Willow link down below. Also, with that Willow link, it's got the link to all my social medias, my Twitch, which I'll be streaming on, um, as well as Brain Fart. Um, my Streamlabs home, which has a link to my donation link, as well as my merch store and some other fun stuff there. Uh, if you guys do send in a donation one, it'll help grow this channel. So thank you. As well as if you send in a donation, you also get to pick a video with your request. So definitely check it out. As always, appreciate you guys. Thank you for watching. Until next time.